I mean, you all know my history. I was... Uh, so you'll say you don't, okay. Um, I was raised in a Jesuit orphanage in Canada, in British Columbia, and um, I spent from 1976 there to 1979 in this place. Um, I've been involved with um, Opus Dei heavily. I've been involved with the Vatican heavily. And um, I was indoctrinated into MI6, SIS, at five years old. And um, I was trained. I came over to England in uh, 79. You know, I settled into England in the early 80s with a foster family. Um, that's the Casbolt family. And um, I was indoctrinated into that. Um, I started um, live operations in my teens um, with them. And that was under the cover of drug wars in London and in areas like Brighton. Um, I was given diplomatic immunity in my teens. And um, I killed my first man when I was 16 years old um, in Brighton. And that was a... Um, that was a child porn ring that was being run there. Um, there was a guy involved in that. Um, and I shot him outside a place called the Sharp Bar on the Brighton Seafront in broad daylight in front of multiple witnesses. Um, I've got over 200 confirmed kills since since um, I was a teenager, um, all through the 90s and from 2000 to 2012. Oh, um, you just carried on. I was um, genetically enhanced over a period of years, not just my mind, my body. Right. And um, on my records, it says I've got over 200 killed. Right. You, well, mean, so it's saying that you've killed 200 people, even 200 though that you're people. not aware of it. Oh, I remember killing. Um, not 200 people, but I remember killing a fair amount of people. Right. So as, can, as recently as 2007 in South London. Right. So, but this would be in, under some kind of mind control so that you're not, you're obvious, you don't blame yourself for those killings then. You blame um, whoever's programmed. I mean, I know some of the people I've killed. I know their names. It's, right. I mean, um, I can, and I don't, some of them were terrorists. And I, I don't, no problem with me. No, right. You know, I would, I'd, so I'd do it again if I had to, and I won't lose any sleep over it. Right, so how conscious were you of, you know, I mean, um, I interviewed a guy called um, John Irwin, who claims to have had, not the same, but a similar thing in, in the late 50s, uh, where he was, but he was fully conscious of everything that he was doing when he was murdering these people. He was just, yeah. it was, you know John Irwin, do you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was mainly the um, close combat techniques that, that were programmed into him rather mm. than the actual mission, you know. Um, so when, obviously, if you're going to go and kill someone, if you're conscious of it, that, well, how come you're not arrested and then banged up? What? Because it's um, state-sanctioned execution. Right, okay. And how much, how much are you doing it by your own volition then, and how much is it done because you've been programmed? Um, well, it's the, the, all the lines are blurred now. Right. Whereas, um, in the in the recent years, you know, I've volunteered for some of it. Right. So when you there's been a big war um, has broken out in the intelligence community, and where I'm having to take the fight to people now, or else I'm not going to survive. Right. So so when you've so obviously throughout your teens and childhood, where where did you grow up? Like say from the age of. Ten upwards. Where were you there? I was being moved around the world, you, right. different countries. All right, um, being trained. Right. So when you've murdered these people, what's what's was the technique that you've used? Um, various things. Two thousand and seven was um, myself and another individual. We travelled. Well, I won't say where we travelled from, but we travelled to an area in South London. Right. And we were. Um, I won't say too many details about him because it's not my place to speak for him, the guy that was with me. So you were, you were both in this mission together then? Yeah. Right, as a team? Sort of yeah, thing, right? twin team, yeah. Right, and so 
So what was the method of execution then? Well, um, we, we waited in our car, MI6 Jeep pulled up, and um, this guy got out, gave us a briefcase. But when he gave us, before he gave us a briefcase, he gave us a trigger word, right. which, um, and it's not just trigger words. He used a combination of um, hardware to, to activate implants. But right. it's, um, you know, that, that state of mind that I go, that, they can put you in. That I'll go into right. then, yeah. which is I'll be very cold and efficient. Mm -hmm. And I'll just, all that matters is the target, the mission. That's all that matters. That's right. all that exists. But what was the actual method? Um, well, they gave us the briefcase. It had a gun, um, Smith & Wesson. I, always use, I was often given the same gun. Mm -hmm. um, it's a 9mm Smith & Wesson with a pearl handle on it. And it's got a symbol of a black dragon on the handle. Right, and that, I call that gun Drago, okay. and I've used that gun right. many times. So, so, so it's a shot to the head at close range, then. Is that um, the no, this was we went to a house right. and um, went in the house, tied the guy to a chair, right. put a pillowcase over his head, and I shot him in the face seven times. Right. So would that not be reported in the media? Would that not be picked up? Would would local police not then be called? Would that not then? Is there no prospect of that then getting out to... You know, I don't to know. I've tried to research um, so how would certain you, right. killings, like certain things that happened in Brighton mm -hmm. when I was 16, 17 years old. So you would then be re-picked up by... I mean, how would you then get away from the murder scene without being caught by the normal police? Well, you just walk out. Right. Just walk out of the house, shut the door, get back in the car, drive to the... To the operatives that gave the briefcase, give them the briefcase back and go home. Right. It's not really rocket science. 